Hello, my name is Joe Simhart. This is my first attempt at YouTube presentation. I'm in my studio in Pennsylvania, and uh, behind me is a painting that I did of a raven staring at dice falling from the sky. It's a metaphor for Einstein saying that God does not play dice with the universe. So we'll talk about that concept, but the topic of these talks is more in line with my memoir released this year in 2020, Santa Fe, Bill Tate and Me, How an Artist Became a Cult Interventionist. So people have been asking me this question during my lectures over the past decades about cults. How did you get into this business of helping people out of a group into deprogramming or exit counseling or any number of other names that people give that activity? Um, I did it from 1986 through 1998 as the primary source of my living, but I first started exit counseling people out of cult-like organizations back in 1980 after I defected from a large New Age cult named Church Universal and Triumphant. Uh, some of the things I'm going to talk about in this topic called the occulture in cults uh, relates a lot to my personal experience, of course. And within the group I was in were these teachings that claimed to come from hidden sources, from a hidden group of masters or agents in the ethers called the Great White Brotherhood. And the link to this Great White Brotherhood, of course, was through a medium or a psychic, uh, the guru of the group, Elizabeth Prophet. There are literally thousands of groups like this, large and small, around the world and have been for a long time. But in modern times, most of them borrow ideas from the New Thought experiments in the 19th century and the Theosophical Society and um, the early Rosicrucians, some of the more esoteric aspects of Freemasonry. Uh, not everything that's involved in the occult is good or bad, uh, it may be just part of a religion, for instance. Uh, the way I see it, nearly every religion has occult and cultic aspects to it. I mean, you look at evangelical Christianity, for instance, their method of prayer is a way of invoking the will of God, and this agent called God is now hearing your fervent prayer and then carrying it out a course according to his will. But the idea is that as an evangelical, you have contact with the truth and the truth will set you free. It will also do a lot of things for you, like protect you from bad government, from disease and so forth. The New Thought Movement offered the same idea that if you do affirmations, that some kind of an agency called the universe or maybe a God or a spirit or maybe just the human mind will uh, somehow, in an abstract sense, bring all this energy back to you to give you health and wealth and prosperity and, and, and all of that good stuff that people want in their lives, right? So the group I was in, this Church Universal, offered all of that and more. Uh, there was uh, some sinister aspects to it, which we might call witchcraft in the bad sense, meaning that they would use mantras or decrees to manipulate reality, and most of the time they did it for a good reason, the way evangelicals pray, for instance, or Catholics say prayers or novenas for special causes. But inside the group, there was another layer of, of energy, of political energy, which did not like right, uh, left wing, I'm sorry, they were very right wing. They did not appreciate the left wing and liberal causes and uh, chanted against uh, the capitalist communist conspiracy, so they were after both ends of the power spectrum. And one of the things they said in, in, in their secret teachings that I had read and believed at one time was that, that the intent of the group was to shake up the government, to, to shake it upside down and inside out. And when the dust settled, then the Christed ones would rise and take over the government, being led by the Great White Brotherhood of Ascended Masters. We're hearing some of that today in 2020, with uh, different conspiracy groups saying the same thing, that government should be upended and, uh, and the special people that believe in the conspiracy should be the ones running 
the government, or at least uh, not be governed by a bad government. So in my book, I cover quite a bit of the territory of the our culture. And this term, our culture, is, is a way of explaining a type of knowledge or a way of knowing in the human uh, culture. And what that means is that through intuition, through instinct, through some kind of a special knowledge, we're aware of agents that can uh, uh, do these things. For instance, uh, heal, uh, predict the future, um, change government, change the weather, uh, and, and all of that stuff that we wish we could do. It's kind of like the, the, the lion in The Wizard of Oz who was cowardly, but when he sang his song, If I Were King of the Forest, remember that song? Uh, th he was a wounded narcissist. He, he, he wanted to do something that he, he felt he couldn't do and that these forces around him were preventing him. And uh, he needed that courage in order to persist with his dream. Uh, wounded narcissists are, are people in the art culture who believe they need special powers and special knowledge in order to rule, to have some kind of power over their lives and over the world around them, which in their narcissistic idea is taking away their power. I mean, this could be immigrants, this could be, um, you know, people that teach in universities, it, 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 it could be uh, some spirits that have existed forever fighting uh, God for the uh, dominance on the planet. I mean, all kinds of things feed into this idea. But these are the kind of things I'm going to talk about and get into much more deeply. Um, just to define the occult a little bit, occult means hidden, hidden from our senses. Uh, so anyone that believes they have a sixth sense or are, are psychic at times uh, are practicing a form of occultism. Um, as I said, most religions have a basis in, in uh, the, uh, some kind of occult power or occult awareness things that are hidden from humankind, from human senses. And there's also a kind of a cult within every religion. Uh, cult means to care for in a special way, usually through rites and rituals, and usually it's some kind of activity projected toward a person, an idea, or an object. Um, for instance, you can have tree worship in primitive societies. Um, the, the Garden of Eden culture was apparently a tree worshiping culture because these trees of knowledge, trees of life, and, and so forth existed, and they had special qualities that we don't normally assign to trees. So there was this special cult surrounding this occult, hidden knowledge that only God knew and gave to human beings. Uh, so the word cult comes from the word cultus. It means to care for. Uh, the Romans had a religion called the cultus deorum, which meant caring for the gods. And so it was a orthopraxy, meaning that they practiced their religion more than believed in it. It wasn't a matter of belief. That came much later in, in human uh, consciousness, mainly through the, the Christian idea, through Luther especially, that faith will save you. But praxis, or some kind of practice, or working the system was a way that most people attended to their religion. And, and by caring for the gods, the gods will care for you. So you did sacrifices to them, which could amount to anything from bowing um, and, and spending a couple days meditating somewhere to actually sacrificing an animal or even a human being for this God to uh, grant you a favor. So the, um, the idea of a cult has been around for a long time. The communication with other spirits or agents has also been around for a long time. The Oracle of Delphi, for instance, was one of the most famous in, in uh, ancient Greece. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope I've captured your interest. Um, I have a lot to talk about, a lot of topics. And thank you for listening so far.